Hi everyone, this is Tim Jurgensen. Uh, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be having a look at mastering. Now, mastering for me is, uh, it, it's not a big deal, you know, like people always ask me, oh, how come your tracks sound so warm? Why are they so loud? Um, is it your mastering? And I, and I, I say no, it's, it's more the mixing stage. Um, uh, what do I mean by mixing? I mean balancing it. Um, changing all your volumes, setting your compressors, getting your EQs right, all that sort of stuff. Um, it's quite tricky mixing. I've over the last probably year or two, I've really learned a lot about it, and it's completely changed my sound. Um, mastering, I just do a little bit of multiband compression, uh, a little bit of EQ, and a limiter just to get the volume up. So let's have a look at my mastering track. Okay, so first in line, I have the Pro Q, which is my EQ. All right, so if I hit play on the track, It's quite a trancey track. Um, there's a lot of bottom end. Uh, it's it's quite a loud mix. Um, sounds really good out on a big system. Okay, so if we have a look at my EQ, I've made a heavy cut at around about 20 hertz to get rid of all the mud and all the crap that sits sort of below that. Okay, I've made a slight cut, uh, about three and a half dB at 200 hertz and I've made a small boost at 2,000 hertz or 2 kilohertz and I've also cut out all the highs above sort of 20,000 okay 20,000 hertz now I like making quite a heavy cut um, some people like to do it more of a gentle roll off um, I think the gentle roll off will work better if you're mastering say a band um, or guitars and things like that, bass guitars. But with dance music, I find if you make a heavy cut around about 20 hertz, 25 hertz, it tightens up the bass and makes it sound it more punchy. Um, I've always done it. I'm sure audio engineers out there or mastering engineers will tell me I'm wrong. But look, that's just the way I do it. Sounds good to me. 200 hertz um, doesn't sound good to our ear. It's, I think it's the worst sounding frequency on the whole spectrum. Okay, now I've made a three and a half dB cut there. Uh, Tommy DeClerc actually taught me that one in one of his Future Music magazine uh, tutorials. Um, I've been doing it; it's it's only slight, but I think it makes a, a, a little bit of a difference. Um, and here I've made like a one dB boost at two thousand hertz. Uh, two thousand hertz sounds really good to our ear. Um, it's very it's the loudest. Uh, uh, part of the frequency spectrum for our ear. Okay, now I've made a cut above 20,000 uh, hertz because our ears can't hear that high basically. Anything past that's just rubbish. So that's I basically tightened up the mix with a little bit of EQ. It's it's not much, it's, it's ever so slight. Okay, so next in lies the Isotope o Ozone 4. Um, great mastering plugin. If, if you want to spend a little bit of money on a mastering plugin, I suggest using this. It, it is amazing. All right, so let's have a look at it. So this is my multiband dynamics. So if I hit play, I'll just go back to the bassier part. Okay. Now I'm not hitting it very hard. All right. It, it's, it's quite slight. Um, I'm only getting about 1 to 2 uh, dB of gain reduction. Um, I've boosted it at about 3, 3 dB. Um, so I'm not hitting it as hard as what most people do. My compressor's set at 1.31. Uh, that's the ratio and a little bit of... Uh, uh, yeah, the threshold's down about minus 22, which is, yeah, giving me, giving me around about... Oh, yeah, between 1 to 2 dB in gain reduction. Um, what else do I have? If I solo the next band, okay. Once again, very, very slight. Not much compression. Um, some people hit hit the multiband quite hard. Um, my mix is already quite balanced, so I don't need to hit it that hard. Um, some people don't put a lot of emphasis on the actual mixing stage, so therefore their mastering is a little bit more tricky. Uh, mine's quite gentle. So that's a multiband compressor. I'm hitting it hitting in the highs too. 
Once again, very, very small amount, only roughly between maybe 0.5 to 2 dB of gain reduction. Okay, so it's not that much. Now, I've got a little bit of multi, uh, sorry, the multiband harmonic exciter, ever so slight on the top, which is here. Okay, I've only got 1 dB up there, so it's not much. And next is my maximizer which I always sort of hit from around about uh, 6 to 7 dB. And um, it's the Intelligent 2 and it's fast and loud. It, it sounds good. I'm not hitting it too hard. Some people hit it a bit harder, around about 8 to 9 dB. But it starts to pump. It doesn't sound very good. So that's it for my mastering. Pretty simple. Um, I, get, I guess if you're mastering, like I said, band stuff... Um, You've got like an album to do and, you know, all the mixes have to sound relatively the same or all the masters have to sound the same. So it's a bigger job. But for me in dance music and house music, it's, it's you know, only a little bit. I'm just basically a little bit of light compression, some light EQ and just, just the limiter to bring up the volume. And, that, and that's pretty much it. I'm sure people have more technical and a lot more sort of plugins on their master track. Um, that's not me, mine's very gentle, uh, this track it sounds awesome, it sounds great loud, um, in a big club, um, it sounds good on headphones, I've tested it on many different systems and it sounds great. So just remember, keep your mastering to a minimum, make sure your mix is good, when your mix is good, mastering, you don't need to do much. Um, if you have any questions, uh, shoot me an email on YouTube or you can use my Gmail account, uh, thanks for listening. Cheers, guys.